So monster design. So number one, expand your inspirations. Go farther than baseline animals and concepts. So a lot of the times when I see people designing for the first time, they kind of get like two main inspiration sources, one or two main inspiration sources when they're designing something. And then they're like, okay, I'm good. Let's keep going. Don't stop there. Like the, the basic one that most people start off with is like an elemental creature. Go further than just that element. Say if we had like a fire creature, right? If you only use normal fire as a reference, or let's say that you only use stuff that like has fire in there. You're like, oh, I'm going to use like a torch or I'm going to use like a flamethrower or I'm going to use so on and so forth, right? That's cool. Go farther. There are things called fire salamanders. There are, there's fire opal. There's stuff that's like that you can relate to fire in ways that you don't understand right you could have like fire as an emotion that could be like like when you're fired up that's like an adjective by comparison to the actual noun you want to keep going from that baseline right you don't want to just stick to one idea a lot of the times artists may use something called a mind map which is also considered like a brainstorm like you know you start with your main topic in the center so again let's say that we took fire so if we had fire right we branch out and you can have like actual fire and that could be like torches, matches, flamethrower. And then you maybe you have like objects. Maybe you've got like fire opal or charred things. Maybe you could have like based on destruction, the concept of fire. Maybe there's like wildfires, right? So on and so forth, right? Go farther than just the main idea that you have. Expand, expand and get creative. Because if you find yourself in a rut, the monster's like already gonna be boring. Number two, learn your anatomy. Anatomy does not always mean human or organic anatomy. That's good, that's great. You're, you're already like three steps of the way there. The real definition of anatomy is a study of the structures or internal work of something. It's how stuff works. It's how you do stuff. Everything looks better when you understand it. When you understand how something actually works, how something operates, it will make your design so much better because then you'll know how to change it. You'll know how to incorporate it creatively. One of my favorite designs that I've ever seen of a monster is somebody who took the concept of a vampire and they really changed it so it was more mechanical and they made it so it was a little bit more man-made comparison to, oh, I've been bitten, this is what happens. And I thought that that was a really, really cool design, right? And they under they had to learn how pistons worked, and they had to learn how that syringe would work, and they had to learn how all of that worked in order for that to make sense. Learning your anatomy, learning all of this stuff, really, really important. Everything looks better when you understand it. Number three, get weird. Never say never until you've tested it. When I teach my students, one thing whenever I teach like a character design class is I, I call it the what if method. And the what if method is just letting your brain go, what if this, what if that, what if I do this, 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 this. Keep, keep getting weird. Keep getting like those weird ideas in, get those strange thoughts in. Because the main thing, some people like they'll, they'll go like, oh, actually, I don't think I like this. Or, oh, actually, I think this won't work. Or I think that won't work, so on and so forth. You'll never know until you actually test it. Maybe you come up with the weirdest thought process and you're like, um, I don't know if that'll work. And then you just never test it. That could be like the best design you've ever done. And some of my weirdest thoughts have become some of my craziest designs. If I go back to that, I, th that monster that I told you I was designing for my best friend, I... The, the idea we landed on was a very biblically accurate angel thing. And my idea for that was like, what if his whole body was just made of wings? Like, what if I just added as many wings as I could? <laughs> and I was like, what if we had wings that were like covering up the base of the neck? Or what if we had his tail made of wings? And I was like, a tail made of wings kind of sounds fun. So I tried it. Like I, when I designed it, I was like, this is so strange. And I, I still really, really love that design to this day. It was really fun. It was a lot of, it was a very, very weird design. And it was all just me going, what if I did this? What if I did that? What if I just kept on doing this kind of stuff? And we landed on this. And I think that this was, this is still one of my favorite creature designs, but like sometimes things just don't work, right? There were two other designs. There was this weird alien one. I had a lot of fun with the, the concept for this one and a more like mech one that I also had fun with the concept for. Like some things don't work. Some things think like just, just don't work out. So you just gotta, doesn't work, try it again. Thumbnail it, test it, make silhouettes, make concepts, get weird get weird and those are always the most fun monster designs we started with general monster stuff some of the stuff my favorite stuff to actually draw is the scarier stuff i really love working with really weird scary monsters and like some like if i actually intend to try and make a creature freaky or i intend to make a creature a lot scarier um there's a few things that i always keep in mind when i work with them um of course monsters don't necessarily have to be scary they can be visually like if you ran into them obviously you'd run away screaming but there it, there's a fine line between it like actually scary and like scary as a concept right 
If you actually want to have people get like chills down the spine when they're working on a monster, there's a lot of processes that you got to go through. There's a lot of things that you got to go through. Um, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating how the human psyche works. So number one, if you want to cause fear, you should be scared too. If you want to create something that is scary, you yourself should get scared. Real fear is the best way to make something terrifying. If you make monsters, if you make creatures based on things that you are scared of, that fear will come across in that design. Like understanding things that make me terrified allowed me to make scarier creatures. So number two, visually unsettling things lean into uncanny valley. Get very, very close to the human visage without crossing the line, right? Uncanny valley is something it's, it's a term that I think has gotten watered down. It, a lot of people will go like, oh, that's so Uncanny Valley, and it's really not. Um, Uncanny Valley is actually very, very tough to master. Uncanny Valley is the stuff that gets so close to the human visage, but has like something just slightly off. And that's what causes your alarm bells to go off. And it's, it's tough. It's very, very tough to actually get right. Um, so visually unsettling things lean into uncanny valley. My four, or technically three, but four top things that I always say, straight teeth are scarier than sharp teeth. A smile is scarier than a scowl. Unblinking eyes are scarier than lidded eyes. Shift anything slightly. I hate to break it to you guys, but um, Uncanny Valley only works if you have a more realistic style. I apologize. Um, if you work in a more cute, cartoony style, it unfortunately doesn't work as well. Because a horror needs a more realistic rendering style in order for it to actually strike that kind of fear. Which is like... Which is why, like, some people, rather than relying on the style, they rely on the atmosphere that everything else creates. This is our last point that some of you may hate to hear. <laughs> Gore isn't actually that scary. I'm sorry. It's, it's a thing where, like, this is why I recommend, like, gore as, like, baby's first horror. It's something that, like, I don't think is actually that freaky. Because gore doesn't strike fear it strikes disgust there's a there's a very very fine line between the two less is more less is more with a lot of designs and monsters are included in that right gore is overdone more subtle viscera is better than outright carnage right if you have like this this creature that's like just really disgusting i'm not going to describe anything but they're like really disgusting you don't want that like that's not scary that's just gross right you have to find that point between something being actually scary and something just being kind of disgusting. Disgust is a very, very different emotion. They, they go hand in hand, but disgust is not scary. It's it's just like an uncomfortable feeling. With this stream, the poll that was given was what I would focus on for this design, and they all chose the axial skeleton. For those that don't know, the axial skeleton is the skull, rib cage, and spine or vertebrae. These are all the parts of the skeleton that don't come in pairs, and is personally the spookier part of the skeleton, in my opinion. I didn't say it on stream, but a long time ago I had a concept for something called the Moon God. You could summon her by performing a ritual by the water's edge at a beach at night, and she would grant you wishes. The trade was for you to bury bones in the sand in the center of her summoning circle. It didn't matter what bones you used, but depending on the rarity or how difficult it was to obtain, you could ask for something more severe. For instance, if you were to bury your baby teeth, you could probably wish for a bag of chips or a gold fish. However, if you were to sacrifice a newborn spine, you could wish for anything in your wildest dreams. I would say these examples verbatim, and I think I remembered this while designing this creature, so I took that into account when adding the baby head on top of the spine. I also mentioned with this lesson, thinking really outside the box and getting weird when designing monsters, so I took one look at the rib cage and went, those would make great centipede likes. And who am I to stop my own creative thoughts? Another thing that can really add to the horror factor of the creature you design is the rendered quality. In this case, even though I didn't paint, nor did I really have a super quote unquote finished version of this, I still tried to add that horror like finish quality by making my lines a little more soft and sketchy, like it was done with pen and paper. This way I could also hatch in shading to give it that somewhat rustic look that adds to the overall finish. What's really fun about fan culture is that the more serious the topic, the less serious the fans. Horror fans are pretty goofy people, so this creature was named Chalky Milk. I did say in stream that having a cartoony cute style doesn't really work for Uncanny Valley, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work for other genres of horror. Weirdcore and analog horror tends to use that creepy cute look to its advantage, mixing cutesy styles with photographs or realism to create an almost unsettling vibe upon looking at it. The complete clash of styles can create a really interesting and sometimes terrifying result. There's something really scary about taking something cute or something that's a source of comfort and making it quote unquote dangerous with horror. It's the idea of a false sense of security. 
The Walton Files and Hello Neighbor are two really good creepy cute analog horror examples that I think do this effect very well. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.